Good evening. You're watching the news at 7.30 on ATV. I'm Edna Zay. And I'm Bo Leung. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Long-awaited retirement protection scheme public consultation finally launched. Customs makes record seizure of liquid cocaine worth about $65 million at Cheklapkok Airport. City's Catholic leaders call for unity in the city in Christmas greetings. After decades of discussion, the government has launched a six-month public consultation on a retirement protection scheme. Chief Secretary Carrie Lam says the proposal that targets elderly people in financial distress is better than a universal scheme. Karen Young reports. After years of discussion, the government is finally conducting a six-month public consultation on retirement protection. The consultation is focusing on two approaches. The first proposal, what the government calls the regardless of rich or poor approach, is based on research led by retired Hong Kong University scholar Nelson Chow. No asset or income limit will be set, which means elderly people aged 65 or above are entitled to a $3,230 monthly allowance. The government says this will put a $22.6 billion burden on recurrent expenditure. The other approach is based on a person's economic needs. This will have an $80,000 asset cap set for single elderly people, two times higher than the comprehensive social security assistance. To get the pension, also set at $3,230 per month, eligible applicants will only have to make a declaration and there won't be a means test. It's expected to add $2.5 billion to the budget. However, Chief Secretary Carrie Lam, who also chairs the Property Commission, said the figures are just to have discussions, stressing that this doesn't equal future government policies. Standing firm on its stance, the administration stated in the consultation documents that it prefers a proposal that targets elderly people with financial needs, which it says is more economically efficient. Critics doubt the government's sincerity and call it a fake consultation. Well, I will not accept uh, any um, uh, criticism that uh, this is a sort of fake uh, consultation. Uh, the money to, um, to uh, support these uh, sort of programs uh, has to come from the people. So on such an important matter, I have said that it would be irresponsible of the government not to stay its position. With an aging population and a low birth rate, Lam described the city's future full of challenges, adding that the government will have to raise current tax rates or introduce new taxes to finance the pension scheme. The scholar who led a research team on the retirement protection scheme hit out at the government's logic. I think the two the options that are now put uh, to the general public to choose, I think it's a wrong one. It's a, it's a, it's a, two options are not mutually exclusive because they serve different purposes. One is a basically a poverty relief measure. Those who are trying to help those who are financially needy elderly. The other one is to set up a uh, long-term and also comprehensive uh, retirement security scheme in Hong Kong. Chow added, it's crucial to know the issue from different angles, not just from financial figures. Karen Yang, ATV News. Customs officers made a surprise discovery at Chelapkok Airport, finding an air consignment declared as industrial machine with suspected liquid cocaine. It was a record seizure of 62 kilos worth about $65 million, and officers are now investigating where the drug's final destination was. The air consignment declared as an industrial machine was examined by customs officers on the 7th of November after it arrived from Colombia via the U.S. The machine was detained after it was x-rayed and a preliminary narcotics test on the device showed positive reaction to cocaine. The machine was then cut up with the help of firefighters for further checks and officers found suspected liquid cocaine hidden in the innermost metal layer. About 62 kilos of suspected liquid cocaine worth an estimated $65 million was discovered, a record seizure. We believe that a uh, criminal may use this outlet here, may just uh, use this outlet to pour inside. Uh, the liquid cocaine. After they uh, fill this area, they then reconstruct the outer layer 
and then make it look like a real mixer. Three men aged between 33 and 38 years old were later arrested and are out on bail. Officers are still trying to find out where the liquid cocaine was destined for. Lee added that drug smuggling into the city is on the increase. From the figure, we observe that there is in fact a trend, that there is a rising trend for cocaine smuggling to Hong Kong. Uh, apart from that, uh, we also see uh, for heroin there is a decrease. So maybe uh, we believe that, that uh, in coming future, uh, cocaine smuggling may be a trend as well. In the first 11 months of this year, there was a total of 96 cases of cocaine seizures, compared with just 52 cases last year. The city's Catholic leaders have used this year's holiday greetings to call for unity in the city and to stress the importance of family. They also used the opportunity to warn that society had become divided in the past year and that the core value of the family was under threat, Arthur O'Killer reports. Years. Our hearts. The importance of family was Cardinal John Tong's main message in this year's annual Christmas greeting. In his message, he said without the family, society will fall apart, and it is a core value that was under threat. We have experienced disputes, conflicts, communities being torn apart. We have also come across core values such as the family being challenged. He called for followers to care for their families, parents, grandparents, children and neighbors, with smiles and hugs, rather than with text or social media messages. Last month, Tong stirred controversy when he urged Catholics to consider their local candidates' views on gay rights during the district council elections. He also compared homosexuals to drug addicts. As we Paul Kwong from the Anglican Church addressed political divisions in the city over the past year. Our city has been divided and fragmented after the Occupy movement and the dispute over political reform last year. When dealing with people and social issues, we begin to see the more frequent use of violent language and behavior rather than mutual trust, tolerance, objectivity and rationality. We understand that it is difficult to resolve these conflicts and challenges because of the complexity of the causes and different historical backgrounds. Huang, a local delegate to the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, said the season reminds us of the importance of understanding, acceptance and tolerance. Arthur Urquiola, ATV News. The Urban Renewal Authority has announced that units at its subsidized de novo development in Kai Tak will cost between $3 million to $6 million. Single applicants can apply, but not for two-bedroom flats, which are being reserved for households with two or more people. More from Arthur Okula. Following this morning's board meeting, the Urban Renewal Authority announced the latest sales arrangements for its de novo project in Kai Tak. Lots will be drawn from the same ballot for both single home buyers and families to determine who will be able to buy one of the 338 subsidized flats. Only couples and families were originally allowed to apply for the units, but the authority later dropped the condition. The monthly income limit for single applicants has been set at $33,500 with an asset cap of $1.5 million. These applicants can only apply for single room units or studio flats. For households with two or more members, the monthly income limit is $60,000 with a $3 million cap on assets. Two bedroom units will be reserved for these applicants. URA Executive Director Pius Chang said while it's important to allocate units with more than one bedroom to families, the authority decided to have all applicants in a single ballot in the interest of fairness. The official price of the flats was yet to be announced. But the estimated cost is three to six million dollars, including the 20% discount. The latest estimate was made on the assessment of market prices following last week's decision by the U.S. Federal Reserve to raise interest rates. A price list will be released next month, which is also when the authority will accept applications. Applicants will then be able to choose their flats starting in May. Arthur Urquiola, ATV News. 
Rescuers have pulled out the first body from rubble and debris caused by Sunday's massive landslide in Shenzhen. Seven people were rescued overnight and at least 76 people are still missing as mainland authorities raided the company responsible for the dump site. This morning, rescue workers recovered the first body from the massive landslide that blanketed 33 buildings in an industrial district in Shenzhen. The discovery was reported by state media, but it didn't reveal further details on the person's identity. Since the disaster, authorities continue to mobilize hundreds of rescue personnel to look for bodies and survivors. The Defence Ministry said police and military forces were in a race against time to find signs of life. The landslide was caused by days of heavy rain that weakened a man-made mountain of mud, construction waste and rubbish, which had been piled against a hillside for about two years. On Sunday, a giant deluge of soil and debris then engulfed a 380,000 square metre area. That's about the size of 60 football fields. Some areas had mud of up to 10 metres thick, making rescue efforts more difficult. It's reported that mainland authorities have raided the offices of a company at the centre of the disaster, but there were no signs of any employees. This latest industrial accident has once again raised questions of safety standards in the country. Premier Li Keqiang has ordered a probe into the landslide. The incident comes just four months after a massive chemical explosion killed at least 160 people in Tianjin. Prominent human rights lawyer Pu Ji Chang has been given a three-year suspended jail sentence by a Beijing court for comments he made on social media. Pu was found guilty of inciting ethnic hatred and picking quarrels. The 49-year-old lawyer said he won't be appealing the verdict. International rights groups described Pu's case as political persecution. Overseas, a rocket launched by private U.S. spaceflight company SpaceX has successfully had its main stage booster returned to Earth for refurbishment and reuse. And a plane carrying 10 people crashed shortly after takeoff in India, killing everyone on board. Vicky Wong reports. A light aircraft crashed after takeoff on the outskirts of the Indian capital New Delhi. The plane crashed into a wall as it came down and then burst into flames. The Beechcraft King airplane was chartered by India's border security force, carrying members of the border patrol. Most on board were technicians. The government has ordered a probe into the incident. A Texas grand jury has decided not to issue indictments against any members of the jail staff in the case of Sandra Bland. Bland, a black American, was found dead in her cell three days after she was arrested and jailed after a traffic stop in July. After presenting all the evidence as it relates to the death of Sandra Bland, uh, the grand jury did not return an indictment. Uh, there are other issues that the grand jury is still considering, uh, and they will take up those issues when we return next month. Bland was pulled over by state trooper Brian Insinia for failing to signal a lane. A verbal altercation with the officer led to her arrest. Bland was discovered dead in her jail cell three days later with a trash bag around her neck, raising suspicions of racist treatment. A SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket blasted off from Florida with a payload of communication satellites. What made this mission different is that the reusable main stage booster turned around, soared back to Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and landed safely near its launch pad. A space flight first. The successful mission gives a major boost to privately owned space exploration technologies. The California-based company founded by entrepreneur Elon Musk, also the chief executive of Tesla Motors. The ability to refurbish and refly rockets would slash the company's operational costs, according to Musk. Vicky Wong, ATV News.